file upload functionalities a feature that allows user to upload files like images document etc on the server for example applications like google drive applications where you can upload your profile picture like instagram whatsapp etc are those particular applications that have this particular functionality right where you can upload some interesting pictures and some you know interesting files but on the other hand if this you know functionalities are misconfigured it can allow an attacker to find vulnerabilities like stored xss you know and even something known as a remote code execution vulnerability that will allow an attacker to have full control onto their server if you are a penetration tester or a bug bounty hunter finding vulnerabilities related to file upload should be in your priority all right because not only you can find high level vulnerabilities but also if you are like finding vulnerabilities in a bug bounty program it will increase that chance to getting that huge bounty right like the four digit and you know five digit bounties this is why in this video we'll be talking about one unique way to bypass file upload restriction which i have found in you know a private pen test that i did and this will help you to level up your hacking skills but as always before diving deep into this video if you haven't checked out my previous one then go ahead and check it out the link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see it at the right side of the screen and now with that being said let us get started okay so first of all let us try to actually understand that how an application prevents you from uploading any malicious file right so normally all the applications you know most of the applications around the world what they do is they validate the file extension for example let's say we have a web application let's say instagram where we have the file upload functionality that we can use to upload an image file like let's say the profile picture upload functionality right so normally that application is expected to upload images right images that are ending with dot jpg dot png dot you know gif etc and normally you see that most of the application that is supposed to be uh, you know giving this functionality where you can upload images have this particular feature that will allow the users to upload dot png or dot jpg file at least right so what they are doing in the back end is that once you are trying to upload a file the back end server is checking the file extension like let's say you have a file test.png it's going to check the value after the dot which is dot png and then it's going to check whether this particular value is actually a file extension of an image or not and as we know dot png is actually a valid image file extension in this scenario your file will be allowed to be uploaded onto the server right now let's take another scenario where instead of test.png we are trying to upload a file known as test.php right in this particular scenario what is going to happen is that again the server is going to check what exactly is the extension by you know checking the value of the dot so it will be, it will be dot php then it's going to verify whether this dot php is actually an image file or not and as we all know this is not an image file and this is the reason why that you will be blocked and you won't be able to upload this particular file onto the server right now the thing is that most of the applications around the internet they are checking the file extension but we have one more important you know value that needs to be checked which is known as content type okay so this is a header basically okay so when we are trying to upload a file there is a request body that is getting sent to the server in that request body we have something known as content type header which is defining that what is the content inside that particular file like if you say i created a file let's say test.png okay and inside the content i have added something like print hello world which is the code of python right so what exactly going to happen is that the file name ending with dot will tell you the extension of the file right but then we have the content type header which is going to tell that what exactly is the content whether it is image slash jpg whether it is text slash html etc you know and many times there are applications that are validating the file extensions properly but they're not validating the content type if we manipulate that particular content type we will be able to you know bypass this whole feature and even after uploading a normal png file with a little bit of our data we can cause a lot of harm onto the server we can do stored xss we can do remote code execution and a lot of things like there is one instance where i was able to you know find the same scenario and i was able to escalate that particular uh, misconfiguration into a stored xss vulnerability right so many times when you are checking for file upload uh, related vulnerabilities always try to make sure to look into the content type header as well 
to explain it more in depth let's try to go ahead and check a practical uh, you know scenario where i will show you that how we can find you know or how we can bypass this particular restriction so let's dive straight into it before we go ahead and see the practical part let us talk about our today's sponsor for this video which is floppy data so if you're dealing with block website managing multiple accounts or facing ip bans which is very common when you are doing reconnaissance right where you need to constantly rotate your ip address you know that these problems can just pile up and can be very annoying right now proxy can solve these issues way better than vpn especially for tasks that requires multiple ips high speed such as data scraping and you know content discovery through ip rotation account management accessing geographical restricted content without getting flagged and this is where floppy data comes in Floppy Data is a powerful proxy service designed to make online activity secure, seamless and accessible from anywhere in the world. Whether you need proxy for secure browsing, IP rotation, automation or large scale data collection, Floppy Data has you covered. They have millions of global IP from 195 plus locations worldwide, including residential, mobile and data center proxy. You can even select proxies by specific cities. They have a lot of flexibility in their proxy options like we can rotate the IP address, which is something very important for us bug bounty hunters and penetration tester. They have static proxies, perfect for web scraping, reconnaissance and managing multiple accounts or any other automation task. And the best thing is that they are really cost effective, starting at just $1 per GB of proxy traffic plus discount for bulk purchases. Also, they have a top tier security mechanism which is going to protect your data and stay anonymous while you're browsing through their proxy. And the best thing is that they have centralized control to manage access for your team from just one place, right? It is not only a powerful tool, but it is also very affordable. As I have just told you, the price is starting at $0.9 per GB of proxy traffic. If you want to go ahead and check it out, I have put the link of floppy data in the description along with the coupon code that you can use and get floppy data in the best price available. And now let's go back to the video. Okay, so as you can see, I have created this small lab to show you the exact demonstration. And the way I'm going to find this vulnerability is the exact way through which I have found this on a private pen test. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can do that. First, let us try to analyze the application. You can see it is saying that upload your image. And also, as always, we are going to upload one image. Okay, so let me just go to browse files. And let me go ahead and, and let's, let's select this image, for example. Let me turn on the intercept as well. Okay, let's click on open. And let's click on upload image. Okay, and first we're trying to understand its logic. So as you can see, the image is getting uploaded. Let's see what is the response. I'm going to do to intercept the response and let's forward this. And let's wait for a few seconds now. And you can see we've got this response. This is the file ID. And it is also giving us the message that file uploaded successfully. Right, let's forward this. And you see the moment the file is uploaded, we have this download image. And let me click on this. Okay, and as you can see, that when i try to download the image it actually showed me this api endpoint from where it is fetching the image which is i uploaded okay perfect so we have understood everything so far about this application let us go ahead and try to you know um, upload any malicious file for example let's go with html files so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just upload this again let's click on upload images and here i'm going to change the file name right which is obviously what we do when we look for uh, file upload restrictions or file upload vulnerabilities for example let me just do dot html let's intercept the response and let's see what happens and you can see it says 400 bad request right only jpg images are allowed allowed right now you can try all the possible ways through which you can bypass the file extension but it's not going to work here okay rather we should be looking for something which is very interesting which i've told you which is the content type so let me show you what I mean. I'm going to upload the same image. Okay. I'm going to click on upload. And now I'm not going to modify the extensions at all. Instead, I'm going to play with this particular header. Okay. Content type, which is, you can say it's kind of an attribute actually. Okay. You see, it says image slash JPGs. This is, you know, telling the, uh, the backend that, okay, this file having the content of type image and JPG. I'm going to change this to text slash html okay just for this example and then i'm going to forward the request 
and you can see I'm not playing with the extension so it's not going to throw us any errors okay let's forward this now wait for a few seconds again and you can see it has responded with 200 okay right and in the message it says file uploaded successfully let's forward this now and again let's go ahead and click on download and you see it says something really interesting happens okay let's wait and you see the moment I clicked on download here something really interesting happened you know instead of like showing the images showing the image with that which i have uploaded it is showing me the content inside that particular image like these are all the bytes and the reason why it is behaving like this is actually very simple because in the content type we have specified that it is a text slash html file so when we're trying to access this file it is treating that file as text slash html like an html file instead of an actual image file and this is why it is displaying the data in the format of text and html okay and now that we have got it we can simply do one more thing to escalate this further right so let's go ahead and turn on the intercept again let's uh, upload the file let's click on upload and here you can see i'm just going to do one small change first is i'm going to remove this uh, image slash jpg to uh, text sorry text slash html okay and then in the bottom of this whole you know data i'm going to add the malicious javascript code for example uh, script alert one and let's close the tag script tag close okay and now we can simply forward this request and you know, you know analyze the response as well so let's wait for a few seconds here and you can see again it's responding with 200 okay let's forward this and you see this time something really really interesting happens when you try to access the file you see, we have got the alert one, which is saying that we are successfully able to find a stored XSS vulnerability, right? If you take a closer look, again, notice that we have not modified the extension at all. We just modified the content type, right? And this resulted in a stored XSS vulnerability. Obviously, this can also result in, you know, uh, remote code execution and other vulnerabilities. But since this application is developed on Node, it is not possible for us to go with RCE using this traditional way. Maybe we can try some other ways, but that is a topic of another video. For now, I hope you all have understood that how we can bypass the file upload restriction if they are properly validating the file extensions, right? If you have any doubts, if you have any issues, just feel free to let me know and do join our Telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going into cybersecurity, bug bounty, ethical hacking. And lastly, keep learning, keep hacking and thank you so much for watching this video.